But hallelujah. But I want you to keep that same mindset of worship. Hallelujah. And then we're going to go on and I'm going to give the message. This is not my message. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The streams would have gone over our souls. Hallelujah. Then the proud waters had gone over our souls. Blessed be the name of the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who, by the way, made heavens and the earth? I got just a quick question for you before I go into the message. It's, it's, I want you to finish this statement from him, but give a few people a chance to finish this statement. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, any takers, any takers, any takers, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, what happened? If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, Brother Elbert, I know you got one cop. I could tell it, I could see it on your face because you're sitting there like, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, I'm just going to continue to testify what God's been doing. Pastor Herman said from the pulpit a couple weeks ago that God would promote me and advance me on the job, and he wouldn't use the leadership in the city of Portsmouth to promote me, and that really did happen. Um, my manager came to me f Friday, and he was telling me how the when I got the job, they were asking, where did I come from? Who sent me? Who sent you? You did not get in here through protocol. And the uh, director of operations for the city and the senior super zone supervisor for the city both pulled me in the office. And after I left, they pulled my supervisor in the office and said, watch him. We don't know how he got here. Um, we think he's a plant from the city or someone is spying on us. He just told me that Friday that they were all watching me, but they know that God sent me there now. And God has uh, blessed me with an opportunity to coach football again. He's blessed with me with an opportunity to be a teacher for fifth graders in the city. And you guys don't know this, but my passion for young people is like crazy because I see this generation totally lost. And if it hadn't been for God, I would never even be in this situation because I decided years ago that I would just die on drugs. So I just want to give God the glory because he's a restoring God. He's a healing God. He's a, a God that can just build you back up. He can take you to where no man can put you. He can open doors where no man can put you. But I'm going to stop talking. But it ha if it hadn't been for God, I wouldn't be here. That's why I'm just going to say. Hallelujah. Yeah, is, there hallelujah. is there another one? Is there another one? So last week I had um, two doctors support me. went to go see my cardiologist. And um, first I went out, all oh, my pressure gonna be so high, I don't know what I'm gonna do. She said, don't claim that on yourself, the girl did. My pressure was like 126 over 80 something, which was fantastic. So they did the EKG and everything, and they said that the EKG was normal, that the murmur stuff that they were seeing wasn't there. So, you know, he still say, well, you got to be on the, um, the blood thinners, for the rest of life. I said, no, I don't think so. He said, well, I, we just so see. So then Friday, I had another appointment with my vascular surgeon. I mean, when I walked into the hospital, the atmosphere was just like bubbly and smiling. It was just awesome. And then I went to the receptions. It was awesome. Then the other lady, you know, it was a little down, but I still kept the spirit. Um, but so then a doctor came in the room, bam, and he said, how you doing today, Miss Smith? You look wonderful. He said, remember, uh, some of you don't know, I was in the hospital in the first part of January for like six days, and they put me on blood thinners um, because they were saying my kidney and spine wasn't getting blood to my kidney. And he said that everything was, he said, 
he said it was healed. He said you are healed. He said that there is no more anything. He said everything is great. And he's like, and what? He, and I'm like on this side. I'm just like shouting. I'm gonna just jump up around and. They, and he said, I can't explain it. I said, I can't. I said, because my God said that he is a healer who he is. And so, yes, so he said, I'm taking you off the blood thinners. And he said, for the rest of your life, all you have to do is take an extra, extra or however you say it, baby, baby aspirin, aspirin for the rest of your life. He said, you don't need those um, blood thinners in your life. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm still going to just stop this. And he said, now you make sure you do it. Don't eat it with, don't have it with just a cup of coffee. Eat it with some food. He said, but everything is fine. He said, I don't have to ever see you again. Oh. I said, thank you, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise Hallelujah. Your name Hallelujah. Of God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Before we, is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? Is, is there another one? We're working on something. I, I explained to you in a minute. Is there another one? Any other one? Okay. I take it out of the time. I take it out of the time. <laughs> so I think um, some of you all know I had back surgery years ago. And um, back in 2007, I had back surgery, and the provider said, hey, later on, you're going to have to have your spine fused. And uh, shortly after having that surgery, the Lord had spoken that I was healed and I'd never need another surgery. I may have symptoms, but I'll never need another surgery. So through over the years, I would have the symptoms and pain and so forth and tripping over my feet. And I think back in 2018, um, we were over at the other church, and I remember the Lord saying, go up and ask for prayer. And on that day, the Lord supernaturally healed my spine. He realigned my spine. I could hear the cracks in my spine. When um, we, I got up, I asked Pastor, it's cold in here. You, you feel it? And she's looking like, mm. <laughs> And I felt the blank. I said, it's hot. It's hot. So that Monday, this was on Easter Sunday, this happened. And um, I went to see a neurosurgeon, and she said, ma'am, you don't need surgery. She said, all you need is water therapy. And she said, and when I look at your x-ray, you have um, retrolithesiosis, which means um, your spine, it shifts. The spinal column shifts. I've never had that in an x-ray. So everything was fine. 2019, I started to get this leg pain going down. My legs, it would get cold, hot, cold, hot. They did an MRI, and they said, you have tears in your spinal columns um, where the disc space is. And if you have that, normally what happens is your sciatic nerve, the nerves that are going through your spinal cord, if that fluid leaks or touches those, you'll begin to develop leg pain and whatever pain it is. And so I just dealt with the pain through all the years, praying. I'd encourage you all, don't stop asking your brothers and sisters for prayers, even laying hands on you and praying. It doesn't matter if the enemy keeps telling you that, oh, you keep bugging them, you're just bugging them continue. So recently, I was, um, I would say, bedridden for two months, laying flat on my back. The only thing I could do was lay flat and on a heating pad. And I would tell pastor, I'm pain, I'm pain, I'm pain. Um, the same thing happened again. This young lady uh, I met through someone else had prayed for me. And we were getting ready to go out and do some street ministry. And I was getting ready to call and tell them, I can't make it because my back really hurts. And I laid back, and I'm like, God, I'm fed up with this. And those same three cracks I heard again in my spine, and the pain went away. Last Monday, I went to see, to, it was telephonic. I spoke to the neurosurgeon. He said, ma'am, you don't need surgery. He said, you just really need to stretch and strengthen your legs. He said, I looked at your MRIs from back in 2018, and I said, this lady is bent out of shape. He said, but as I looked at 2019, and your 2021, and your 2023, he said, it's like your body is readjusting itself. And then the last one on 
Thursday, because I was like, okay, I'm going to do pain management. I don't care, right? And thank God, because the pain is gone. The pain doctor said, we, we don't believe in doing um, radio frequent ab uh, ablations anymore where they burn your nerves so you don't feel the pain. And he said, I looked at your MRI, and this was in May, and he said, that terror is gone. It healed itself. So if it wasn't for the Lord, I'd be worse off. But he healed me. Amen. And he'll Amen. do the same for you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. The name Hallelujah. Of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. So mine is a repeat, but I'm gonna just keep on saying it. If it had not been for the Lord, I wouldn't be healed from diabetes. I just went to another doctor's appointment and they re pulled my labs again and my sugars are continuously being going down. So I've even gone down, even Lamont has gone down by a whole point. And so I'm believing in the healing all the way around. So y'all keep worshiping the Lord for what he has done and then what he's going to do because he is still working and showing himself strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Why don't we just give him a clap of praise? Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Luke chapter number five. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter number five. I won't be before you long. God has been doing some great things. Amen. He's been given jobs where people say you're not qualified. He's been paying off debts. He's been healing. He's been reuniting old friends. Amen. He's been doing all kind of things because he is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. And I have you share those testimonies so that you will know. There's a reason why I, I believe that uh, my, 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 my darling Carissa doesn't mind tithing. She's seen it work in her family's life. She's seen it over the years growing up, what it does for her mom and what it does for her dad. She's seen the debts being paid off. She's seen the moving from one house to a better house. She's seen God show up in ways that is exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. I won't be before you long. I just want to do this real quick. Um, if you can stand for the reading of the word real quick. Uh, it, it's a familiar passage of scripture, so I ain't got to take a long time doing it. Amen. You have one? Did you have, did you have something? Okay, okay, you good. You just had this look on your face like, yes. <laughs> it's a familiar passage of scripture. I just want to cover it. I feel like the Lord has given me something, um, and it just happened not too long ago. It actually happened on the way here. It says, so it was that as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, I'd be glad when that happens again, that he stood by the lake of Genesareth and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And he had gotten to one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put it out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he asked Simon to launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night. You've caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. I want to thank God that he's a God of another chance. Father, we bless you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. God, we say, have your way. Have your way, God, till there's no more us, only you. Have your way, God, until you do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Have your way, Father. We bless you. We bind the spirit of frustration and division, and depression and anxiety. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Today I want to deal with something that 
If I can be honest as a believer, I struggle with. I struggle with this, and I fight. And when I fight, I struggle, and when I struggle, I fight. And those of you who have ever dealt with some of what I'm about to talk about will understand. Then the story, the Bible talks about Jesus and how, I'll, and I said I'll be glad when people do that again, where they're pressing, trying to get close enough to God where they can hear a word. The Bible declares that Jesus was walking and people were pressing because whenever you understand who God is, there's an automatic reaction to want to get close to him. And so they were pressing and they were pushing towards him. Y'all know what pushing towards him means. There is a power of expectation when you are believing God for something so much that you invade his space, that you invade his personal territory, because God, I got to get a connection with you. I got to get close enough to you till I see something happen. And all throughout the Bible, people have gotten close to God so that they can see something happen. You can say that with different people in the Bible where they pressed, they got close to him, they reached out and they grabbed him. The woman with the issue of blood reached out and grabbed him. And, and she said, if I, I may not be able to touch all of him, but if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be way whole. Yes. The man, blind Bartimaeus, sat, by the, sat on the water side. He said, look, he said, master. Peter said, bid me come. Everybody in the Bible, they had to make a profound decision that if I was going to get something from the Lord, I had to expect something from him. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And they were pressed because they wanted to hear something that would change their lives. And so they got close enough to him that they got invaded his space. And he was OK with that, but he needed to get the word out. And so Jesus, God being the perfect opportunist, saw two boats and he says, I'm going to get on one of them. How many of you know that when he got on that boat, you may be going through some trouble, but all you need is the presence of God to get on whatever you in. And he says, I need to use what you have. Sometimes we make so much of a thought in what we lost that we forget that God can use what we have left to regenerate everything that we lost. But sometimes we get so caught up in the things that we lost that we forget about that there's power in what we have left if we give it to God. Amen. I would be remiss to saying sometimes the things that we lose, we lose them because we didn't give it to God. But that's a whole other sermon for a whole other day. There's power in what we have left. He says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, says he who's holy, who's this. He says, he who has the key of David, he said, behold, he says, I set before you an open door and no man can shut it. But if you notice what he said afterwards, he said, for you had a little strength, but you still kept the word and did not deny my name. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he says, he says, all I need is what you have left. He went to the widow woman and he says, what do you have left? She said, well, I only got a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour. And so I was going to make one last cake, and then me and my son was going to die. It's an awesome plan if you really think about it. But God says, I tell you what, the little bit that you have left, give it to me and let me make something out of it. And so they decided to give God their boat. And Jesus sat on the boat and he says, go out a little bit deeper. And I often wondered why he said go out a little bit deeper. See, because oftentimes if you walk, co-pastor preached a message about that one time at a revival, when you're in the water, when you're in the water and you're just standing there and it's at toe level, you have total control. But if you step out a little bit, the water gets higher. And then you step out a little bit more and the water gets waist deep a little difficult to do what you want to do anymore. But by the time you get up to a certain level, water can just wash you away. So he said, launch out into the deep. Launch out. Launch out. I need you to, 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 to launch out. I need you to, to get me to a place where I can sit 
and do less, but get more out of it. And so he said, he said, go ahead and park your boats. And they parked his boat, and Jesus did that, which only he can do was he spoke the word. Well, he, he's not the only one that can do it now because he gave us that power. But he spoke the word. He did that thing that God did in the beginning where he said, let there be. He moved things. He shifted. He spoke God's word and God's words was, does not come back to him void. He spoke it. And as he spoke it, things begin to happen. People begin to get healed and people begin to get set free. People begin to get delivered. And, and let me tell you what happened. God wanted to use what he had. And then after he had finished preaching, after he had finished doing that, which wrecked cities, after he had finished speaking his word, after he had finished using what Peter and the, his brother had left, he turned and he looked at them and he says, it's time to go fishing. He says, I want you to launch out a little bit further. I used you while you were in shallow water, but now I want you to follow me further and launch out a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And I want you to cast out your net. Sometimes God will put you in predicaments where he'll promote you, where he'll do certain things so that you can see that you can be trusted by him. And he teaches that class, and then what he'll do is, once you've gone there, then he'll launch you out a little bit further. You're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over much. And so now, and sometimes the blessings of God can be uncomfortable. Because we find out that in some areas we wasted some of the things that God's given us, and in other areas we mismanaged it, and in other areas we took care of it. But when God gets ready to promote us, God gets ready to promote us so that he can show us even our inadequacies so that we'll know that his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So he told Peter, he said, Peter, he says, I want you to launch out a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper water. I need to tell you something that Peter made a profound statement. Peter said, Master. In other words, he recognized who Jesus was. He says, we did this already. That's really what he was saying. He said, and a matter of fact, it wasn't just that we did it. We did it all night. We did it faithfully all night. And we caught nothing. But maybe seaweed or something like that. He said, we caught nothing. He said, we did it all night, we did it all night, we did it all night, and we caught nothing. I want to tell you that there's a spirit of frustration that can come on you when you worked all night, when you worked hard, and you did the work, and you did everything that you thought you were supposed to do, and you did it, and you did it, and when you didn't do, couldn't do it, you did it some more. He said, we tried all night, and we caught absolutely nothing. And if you notice, I know they had quit because when Jesus had walked up on them, they had already gotten off the boat and they had already cleaned their nets. And Jesus told them to get back in the boat, still obedient. And he told them to launch out again. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe this is just you. Maybe I'm, the, but sometimes God frustrates me. Sometimes I have to do that because I had to, I always say you can ask God questions, but just don't question God's authority. Y'all know the difference. Yes. You can ask God questions. Ask him questions because I, 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 I did that already. I told you the story about how I did that already. Got upset with God and I said, God, you suck. I, I did. I, I ain't lying. I told him. I said, you suck. I said, you, I, I'm struggling right now because you don't seem like you're doing, you, you're not guiding the way you're supposed to guide. You, you God, then let's see you, God, go ahead then, do your thing. <laughs> and right then I fell down the steps. I told y'all that. I fell down two flights of steps. <laughs> North Carolina A&T State University, steps go around. I fell all the way down into the library. Boom! Boom, 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 boom,
Everybody at the college was in the library at that time. <laughs> when I fell, when I fell, my fall was made public. North Carolina ANC, and the first person I saw with that pretty thing right there, concussion and all. Let me tell you what, I, I, look, I was like, Lord, she must, I said, she is beautiful. I don't know whether it was a concussion, see this, now maybe I still got a concussion, because I still, see. but that was the first person I saw. And every friend that I met that week helped me change my life. Now, I could have asked God in a better way. Maybe I wouldn't have got embarrassed like that. <laughs> but nevertheless, he says, I toured all night and I didn't catch anything. In other words, so you think I didn't try? You think I didn't try to save my marriage? You think I didn't try to, 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 to heal my finances? You think I didn't try in this thing? You think I didn't try to do whatever it is I'm trying to do? You think I didn't try to change my health? You think I didn't try to study? You think I didn't try to cook? You think I didn't try to do this? You think I didn't try to keep my health right? So you think I didn't try. You think I didn't try when, when, and, 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 when, and, and, and things still didn't go the way I thought they should go. So are you saying you think I bought this on myself? I to toiled means to work hard, extremely hard, to try to receive a result. Blood, sweat, and tears. He says, I tried all night. Why is it important that he say all night? Because night is where the darkness dwells. Night is when you do stuff and nobody's watching you. It wasn't that I tried in public to be seen. I tried even in the darkest of times, I tried when I couldn't see what I was doing. I still tried and I tried and I tried and it didn't work. I tried and I, and I don't know how to explain this the way I'm seeing it, but I tried, Lord. I tried. I worked. I worked. I begged and I pleaded. I did this and I did that and I waited patiently and I did all that stuff but when the breaking of day had I still didn't do nothing I don't know why I just keep seeing people do this I, I try y'all know y'all feel like that sometime in your spirit I try I worked but it didn't seem like have you ever worked hard and it didn't seem like what you were doing was enough have you ever did something for somebody or something and then you did it and the only comment they had was that you didn't do it the way they wanted you to do it? I bought you this, but, but you didn't add this to it. Hey, I'm sorry this happened. Well, you could have apologized earlier. I did this. Well, you should have did that with it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but sometimes we feel like we worked all night. And I don't know why, I, I, just, I just got it. I don't know why this is still, it won't leave my spirit, I'm gonna do it. But, and we work all night. Nothing. Is there any reward for what I've done, any reward for my labor? I tried. I tried real hard. And it don't seem like it's getting me anywhere. I tried and she still want to leave me. I tried and he, he won't stop doing what he's doing. I tried and, and this and that. And I tried and it seemed like every time I think I'm about to get ahead and I take four steps forward, it seemed like something pulls me five steps back. I am trying! And I don't know, but maybe... Uh, uh, see, and... But that frustration can be real. And the problem sometimes with us as a church is that we don't address stuff like that and we don't recognize that that thing can be real. He says, I tried all night. Yeah, I tried. I washed my nets. I was quitting. But you asked me to get in the boat. You asked me, could you use my boat? You didn't say I had to do anything else. 
and I tried, and then you asked me to get back in the boat, the very same thing that I failed at, and you asked me to get back in it, and I got in the boat. And then you asked me for something else, God. And I did it because I know who you are. And I got back in the boat, and you asked me to move it out a little further to shore. And I often wonder why sometimes God does stuff like that. I have come to the belief that God pennies us sometimes because if he knows that he put the whole dollar vision on the table, we wouldn't do it. Can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? Back in the day when I was, and I still have some of the same issues. I'm st- I still, and back in the day when I had just gotten out of the military, if God would have told me he would have, that I was going to be a senior pastor, I'd still be running. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Back in the day, if he'd have gave me the whole vision and everything I would have had to go through and everything we would have had to endure, if he would have told it all to me then, whoo, I'd probably be in a lot better shape because I'd still be running. But he says, I tried, and then you told me to get on the boat. You told me to launch it. You told me to move. I moved. And then once I moved and I got there, you did something in my life, and it was great. And then you told me to do something else. And then I launched out a little bit further, and now I'm further away than I ever have been, and I don't even know what to do. And then you tell me to do the very thing that I failed at. Could it be that maybe one of the reasons why you failed is because the first time you did it, you did it in your own strength. I apologize. I know that matter matter got you. I apologize because it got me too. But could it be that the first time you tried, you did it in your own strength? The first time you tried, you did it with your own knowledge. The first time you tried, you did it with your own wisdom. The first time you tried, you did it for your own benefit. The first time you tried, you did it for your own way. And although you did it with good intentions, it wasn't God's intentions. Could it be? Yeah, I, I hear you, child. I hear you. I know you tried. I know you tried. I know you tried to save your marriage. I know you tried to save your business. I know you tried to save your job. I know you tried to save yourself in, in, in school, high school, college, elementary school. I know you tried to save yourself on your job. I know you tried to save yourself in the courtroom. I know you tried to save yourself everywhere you can think of. But did you do it my way? Did you do it for my glory? And I'm not picking on you, child, but what I'm telling you is there's another way to do it. So what I want you to do this time, that you follow me out past your comfort zone. Oh, my God, because God will put, make you follow him way past your comfort zone, family. I'm telling you, I'm, God will make you follow him way past where you're comfortable into where he's comfortable, into where your comfort and your rest, it depends on him. And God will make you follow him. And God will say, you know what, launch out with me, launch out with me. I know you don't feel comfortable standing up here. I know you don't feel comfortable doing this. I know you don't feel comfortable in your job. I know you don't feel comfortable. But all I want you to do is trust me. And when you trust him, dear God, he says, let down your nets. So Peter let down the nets on the other side, and the Bible records that they caught a great multitude of fish. So much so they call them fishes. You don't even say fishes, you just say fish. Fish is plural. Fish is singular and plural, but they say fishes. He caught a great multitude of fish. And the Bible records that from that very moment, he knew he was the son of God. I want to talk to you about frustration. Now this one, they got it right. It said a number of fish and their nets were breaking. Can you go one more? I think verse 7. And so they signaled to their partners and to the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat 
and they both, and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Hear me when I say this. Thank you, Minister Tom, for the assist. When you do it God's way, when you do it for his glory, the Bible records that not only was his needs met, not only was the other boat that was with him, the two boats needs met, it said they had to call other people to come and help them catch the stuff because it was too much for them that their cup runneth over. And when your cup runs over, it runs over into other people's lives. When your cup runs over, you got to recruit people to come and help you divide what God has for you. When your cup runs over, and check this out, and even then it says that all the boats were about to sink. Why am I telling you this? There's a point in you being blessed. I'm going to step down because I'm going to get in your face with this one. There's a point when you being blessed where if you don't recruit other people into the goodness of God, that blessing could cause you to sink. That one was just in. I just caught that one. There is a point in you being blessed that if you don't begin to recruit other people, I am convinced, I have finally become convinced the older I get that there are different levels in your Christianity and your leadership. I believe that even in being an adult, I believe that your 20s is the, is the childhood of your young adult life. And as you get older, you, 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 I believe that in leadership and in Christianity, there's a certain place in your walk with God that when God begins to bless you, you have to begin to actually sow it into other people's lives. You have to begin to help other people to catch the same thing that you caught. You have to begin to tell other people where you got your blessings and breakthrough from. And I believe that as you begin to do that, you sow seeds in their lives, then your life begins to change even more. There's a certain place in your walk with God where you, it depends on you becoming the blessing. And God, if you notice, it says that their nets begin to fall. And they begin to call other people, and as they call other people, more fish came. To the point where when they filled their nets, and when they filled their boats, it wasn't enough, and they had to keep recruiting people to help them manage the blessing that God has for them. I'm finished, but I need you to understand that God's breakthroughs and even God's frustration isn't always just for you. Moses went through wilderness experience. Some of us are going through 40 years of frustration just to speak to somebody for 40 minutes and see them get blessed. Some of us have gone through things some of us have done some things. I remember Pastor Paul I telling us a story about how he got cursed by his family. Pastor Paul I, Vietnamese, he's an apostle in his own right. We went with the Vietnam and Cambodia. He'd have been to jail three times for preaching the gospel. He would have an altar call here, and everybody would come to the altar that was in the room. He would go stand over there and then say, I understand, but we used to worship Buddha. And they had a whole lot of gods. And so in order for you to receive this God, you got to give up all the other ones. And he would stand over there, and they would still come back to the altar. And they told him that he would never have a male child. And the day that he had a male, he had daughters first. And the day that he had a male child, his whole generation, his whole family, everybody got saved. What is that? I've seen people get sick. And God used that. And when he healed them, other people came to know the Lord. Sometimes your frustrations and you giving them to God and allow God to use them, sometimes 
you being blessed are nothing more than God being able to use it for his glory. I know it may sound strange, but even as I'm thinking right now of Moses, Moses was walking through the desert and the bush was on fire. I've been to the desert. Bushes are always on fire in the desert. But the difference was that bush was on fire and it wasn't being consumed. That bush should have burned up a long time ago and it hadn't burned up. God must be in that bush because it hadn't burned up by now. The woman with the issue of blood. There are several people in the Bible who God used their circumstances to show people his glory. And what I'm telling you is that sometimes your frustration, sometimes your nose, sometimes the things that you've gone through, sometimes the times that you've worked all night and caught not, or so that it can get you in a place where everybody can see you. Can I introduce one more thought to you? If Peter and his brother would have caught fish that night, by the time Jesus gotten there, they would have already been gone. By the time Jesus had gotten there, their boat would have been filled with their own efforts. And even if they weren't have been gone, they wouldn't have had enough room to let him on the boat. I know, I know, I know it may seem far-fetched. But I'm so glad that we can serve a God who can use even our deepest disappointments. I'm so glad we serve a God who can use even the times that we tried and failed. Do you know he's the God of your failures? Sometimes we find out a lot about ourselves when we're successful and when we fail and then when we're deep in between the two, when we're struggling, trying to figure out where we are. And those are the times sometimes when God wants to reach out to us the most. All I have, question I have is will you open up to him and will you let him have control over your life? I want you to stand. I keep hearing this. It's one of the reasons why I love Minister Tom. He sent me a text. I'm, I'm a, sometimes we keep it secret. I send you a text, he sent me a text. But he said in verse 11, he reminded me of something that I missed. He says, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. I need you to catch that. Their boat was filled with resources. Their boat was filled with the things that God had blessed them with. By this point, they had seen so much from God that they cared more about the blesser than the blessing. All I have is yours, God. And so my question to you is on this day, do you care more about the blessing or the blesser? He says, Master, I toured all night and I caught absolutely nothing. There is a spirit of frustration that wants to hinder you, a spirit of frustration that wants to keep you bound, a spirit of frustration that wants to keep you in doubt, that wants to keep you in lack. And I got a question. And I'll send somebody to you. But if there's an area in your life where you're frustrated, I just want you to slip up your hands. If there's an area in your life where you've been frustrated. I just want you to slip up your hands. People are coming. People are coming. If there's an area in your life where you feel frustrated. You know, here's the thing I love about God. 
God knows where you are. And he knows where you're going. He knows your rising and your setting. He knows the things that you're struggling with. There's two more hands. There's two more hands, one in the back and one over here. But if you've been wrestling with frustration, there's two more hands. Mr. Mark, can, can, if you don't mind, I'll end it. There's two, there's one right here. Frustration is real. I didn't say you didn't try, but hear me. If there's an area in your life where you're struggling with depression, where you're struggling with depression, see, the enemy wants to keep you at a place where you failed. And he wants to keep reminding you of your failures. Is there another one? Anybody who needs prayer or just want prayer? Anybody? I have somebody come to you. We're going to continue to pray. Grab the person, ask the person beside you. You need prayer? You good? You good? You good? Listen. I'm telling you this because I'm telling you that God is so mindful of you. That God is mindful of you. He knows exactly where you are in your life. He knows exactly what you're dealing with. He knows exactly what you're going through. And God has a plan to see you set free, to see you delivered, to see you walk in his blessing. But I would be lying if I said I didn't get frustrated at times. I would. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't struggle with depression or anxiety or PTSD of some sort. I wouldn't be lying if I said I didn't. But I'm telling you that at that point, God will meet you at the, front of, at the point of your frustration. And I want to tell you, even on this hot Sunday morning, that you have not done enough failure that God cannot bring you back from it. But live in witness. He's faithful. He's faithful. Sometimes the enemy wants to kick you when you're down. But he's faithful. God says, do you trust me? Trust me. Trust me, child. Trust me one more time. I know, I know, I know. It gets hard, but trust me. He says, I got your way fixed. Trust me. Trust me. He says, I'll do it. Trust me. Trust me.
trust me. Trust me. When you can't see your way clear, trust me. When you don't know, trust me. 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 Susan, I keep hearing. I was young, but now I'm old. You're not old yet. But your testimony is going to be, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And I keep, I, I saw a picture of you walking and you kept walking in the water and you got to a point where you started to, when I was given that story, I saw you walking in the water and you got to a point where you began to be washed away and you got a little fearful, but God was saying, this is not a wave of terror. This is me in my presence. And what I saw was, and what I'm, even though I'm seeing now, God became the wave that picked you up and he was carrying you in his arms. But you were uncomfortable at first because your feet weren't on the ground. But he's saying that you're in my arms and so you don't have to worry about anything because I'm going to carry you from glory to glory to glory. And while you worship me and while you praise me, I'm going to continue to carry you to places that people don't think you should be in to places that you can't even pronounce, to things that you don't even understand. Not only why am I here, but why do I deserve to be here? And what God is saying is that you're my daughter and I'll never leave you or forsake you. Listen, is there anybody else who needs prayer? I know. Sometimes the pain and the frustration can be so real. Can so be so real. And God says, I know you tried. He said, but give it to me. Give it to, give it to me. He says, when you get to the end of your strength, I'll still be strong. When you get to the end of your might, when you get to the end of your power, your deliverance won't be by might, nor by power, whether it be by my spirit, says the Lord. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions. Let me translate that. I, even I, am he who at the end of your mistakes, at the end of the things that you've done, at the end of the things that you're guilty for, at the end of the things that you did purposely, when you give them over to me, I erase the slate. And when the enemy comes in and says, you can't love her, she broke your covenant. She did it purposely. She went against your will. He says, I don't see what you see. I see my daughter. I see my son. Clean. Washed in the blood of the lamb. I see them healed. I see their relationships restored. I see them free from frustration. 
for love alone. song that is, but every time I hear it, I think of that. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Kiki. Father, back in March, she lost her child, her daughter, to a sense of fact. But God, I thank you, God, that you know where she is, Father. That she's resting in you. And so, God, I pray that you would heal Kiki's heart, Father. I pray, God, that you would help her, God. I pray, God, that you would order her steps according to your word, God. You said in your word that you healed the brokenhearted. And so, God, we say right now, do what only you can do. And so we bless you. Okay. We're almost done. power and glory forever and ever Amen And so Lord I pray that you would perfect that which concerns your people God, to some, they come in with an issue and they're struggling with their marriage. For some, with their finances. For some, with their health. For some, with their mental health and emotional health. For some, God, they just came to give you glory. But God, for whatever reason, we entered this place, God. I thank you, God, that your presence has entered this place, God. And that we will not leave the same. So God, I pray over each and every person in this room, Father. They'll be blessed in the city. And they'll be blessed in the field. I thank you, Father, that they'll be blessed whenever they come and whenever they go. I thank you, God, that their enemies will come at them one way but three and seven. Lord God, my favorite part. Because it's not your will that anyone should perish, that would always have everlasting life. I thank you, God, that that same enemy, we can pray for them and they can get a revelation of who you are. And they can worship with us. God, I bless you. I pray strength and peace over your people. I pray wisdom over your people favor over your people. God, we thank you, God, that on this week, God, we'll see more miracles, more victories, more opportunities to worship and praise you. I thank you, God, for favor that we don't know of. I thank you, God, for truth. And so, God, we thank you, God, that your name is great and greatly to be praised. And so we bless you now, we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Listen, I want you to go and enjoy the Lord and the fellowship of his favor. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody, let them know that you're glad they made it. Fellas, we're going to be having another one.
Thank you guys for showing up this weekend. We will be having another one. Um, I think next week, fellas, we're gonna go to, not next week, in two weeks, to a Japanese restaurant that uh, Brother Quentin told us about. So we're gonna try to have more, okay? Amen. Love you.